so what are we doing? We are doing the assignment. Okay, so do you have it on, is this your site? Yes. You have the Google form? Okay, I see. So we're going to click on the pencil to edit the page because you already have it. Do you have a two-column layout? You have the two-column layout, which was under layout, two-column. Perfect. And so then you went to YouTube and you found a video mm -hmm. of something you would want to teach but not have to like directly instruct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we just need to make the Google form quiz to say, did you actually watch this video? Mm -hmm. so, okay, so we're in the drive. So click on create. Oh, you already made it? Yes, but okay. I was very confused on that part. Okay, so first thing that's super important, uncheck the require Fresno State login. All right. Right, because otherwise your students have to actually log in to take it and that will waste a lot of class time. Now, if you're teaching really little kids, sometimes you, you do want that. There's some rare exceptions, but 99% of the time, I do not. Okay, so you have a question. So we're going to go here to add item. And you see this little arrow? Mm -hmm. You can add a different question type. Okay. So what question type do you want? So paragraph text is a big text box. Multiple choice, one answer, check we boxes. We already did that, so we need different types. Different types. Mm -hmm. Check boxes, they can do multiple mm -hmm. answers, mm -hmm. like... Which of these are the primary colors? And the answers are red, blue, and green. No, it's not. Red, blue, and yellow. So they would need to have three answers. So that's check boxes. Choose from a list is a drop down list on a scale of one to ten. Mm -hmm. And a grid is like a rubric. Okay, we'll do a scale. Okay, so let's do a scale. Now they watched your video on portrait drawing. Mm -hmm. What do you want to ask them on a scale? On a scale. Did you require and oh, other things? One to ten. Mm -hmm. For every single one of them. Um, how well do you understand the video, understand the portrait drawing? What's this help text? Okay, so the help text is, I would actually probably put the on the scale of 1 to 10 down here. So the question is, how well do you understand the video, right? And then this is like, it's not really part of the question, but things to help them to better understand the question. So for example, when I ask for a URL, I, you know, I work for YouTube, sort of. And so we have this form that says, what's the URL of the YouTube video you're submitting? And a lot of people don't know what a URL is, so I give an example. Mm -hmm. Example, www.youtube.com slash, right? And so the help text is can be an example or it can just be clarifying. Yes. Good. And so we're going to go down here. So it's from 1 to 5 by default. So I'm going to actually switch it from 1 to 10. And then you can actually put down here 1 is... No clue. No clue. And 10 is... I could teach this. Mm -hmm. I could teach portrait drawing. No, I could teach this. Form it's not really portrait drawing. It's more on shadows. Okay, sorry. Now, what I want you to do, though, do you see it says required question? Really, you kind of want it to be required. Anything that they... There's two reasons. You don't want them to skip questions. If I don't require that you answer your name, some of them won't put their name in that box. They'll think I just put that in there for fun. I mean, really. You remember in the after school lab at Clovis High and I would ask like several questions like what teacher sent you here and these other things. Especially for like lunch detention, they wouldn't put their teacher's name. Mm -hmm. It's like you do realize that your teacher doesn't know that you were here for lunch detention if you don't put your teacher's name. But you know, whatever. They just didn't feel like putting it. Now as I hover over this, do you see how now the pencil shows up? Yeah. So now you can edit this because first of all, what the heck does Universal Studios have to do with your portrait drawing? I had right? a picture. So what shade... Of gray is good for saggy eye bags from someone tired in the morning. That sounds like a very personal question. I'm, well, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that you know that the video that you had there asked about shading. You know, these delicate shading. So, what are some different terms for shades of gray? Dark gray, black. Yes. Dark gray, light gray. Yep, light gray. White. And um, blue. But, but require the question. Because seriously, they'll just think they shouldn't have to answer it. Mm -hmm. It also, they'll, they might, when the, some browsers, if you hit enter, it'll submit the form. 
and they'll accidentally turn it in without finishing the quiz. So, so if I require everything. So this will also everything? say that, oh, you forgot this. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So now I have two question types. So go ahead and click on this little arrow and put another question in there. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is going to be for text. It's a small box. So something that it's good for like is a one word or a couple word answer. Mm -hmm. Uh, how many eyes are around frontal face? I don't know if that makes sense, but it's fine. And now, is there some some text that they you might want to help them with about that? Or does that question self-explanatory? Self like, I'll say, what is 2 plus 2? I don't need to say add them together. Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay, require the question. Get done. Yeah, that, no, no, that just is giving you a sample of what the box will look oh, like. Okay. Okay, so now you need one more question type. Try to choose from a list. Which is, it's basically multiple choice, but mm -hmm. instead of having all the options taking up screen space, it has a drop down list. Um, what brush technique? What uh, type of pencil do you use to shape? Okay. So then I just list the different pencil types. Okay. 4B, 2H. 4H. Okay. You want to put an okay. other? Oh, you can't put other. Well, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, now require it. Get done. Okay, cool. All right, now you need to add an item. Another one? Well, now you got to ask for their name, you know, mm -hmm. who turned this in. So my suggestion is to put that last mm -hmm. so that they get right into answering the questions. They watch the video, they start answering the questions rather than like, Filling out all their name stuff mm -hmm. and then being tired. All right. First name. That's it. Require it. Trust me, require that. Now do last name. Because if you if you don't, if you just say name, they'll just say Bob. <laughs> you're like, do you, oh, you're okay, now click on the pencil because you can um, you can edit that because you forgot to make it required. They'll put Bob, they'll put Robert, they'll put something different every time, none of which really is that super helpful. Mm -hmm. They'll put their nickname, Joe P. And you're like, I have no idea who you are, Joe P. Oh, it's Robert. And okay, you have period. to ask for the email address. Okay. The reason why I do that is because I actually like to run scripts that'll give them feedback back, or if you use the um, Fluberoo script, it'll grade it for you. Okay, so make that required. Okay. All right, so we're all done. Mm -hmm. And then you want to choose your response destination up here. What is this response destination? Oh, it says my parents live right here. So, so open, open. Okay, and so we wanted a new spreadsheet, and then I like to always create a new spreadsheet because why wouldn't you want a spreadsheet? The students answer it. Don't you want to see everybody's answers listed in a spreadsheet? So every time a student answers, their response end up in a spreadsheet. Yes. But if we don't say always create a spreadsheet, then I have to click that button every time. Because what, what the new forms does is it'll just hold the answers in the form, and then you can see a summary of their answers, but you're not, I don't know why you would want that. I mean, you know what? So what's the summary of the answers? So like, like a pie grade? graph of, you know, 30% said oh, this, 20% okay. said that. I mean, yeah, I might want, I, I very well would want that. Let's hit create. And you'll still get that because you'll hear responses, summary of responses. Let's view the live form. Let's go ahead and just fill this out a few times, right? Start gray. You know, here we are. How many eyes are on the frontal? Six. I don't know. Five. Two H. Wait. Alice Keeler. 
fail. Oh man. All right. Well, okay, right, so there, and then I'm going to submit another one, so I'll pretend I'm another student. That would be me. Mm. Okay, so now... We've filled this out a couple of times. If you click here on View Responses, you can see the spreadsheet of everyone that answered. Now, if you had 200 students, they'd all be listed right there. You could grade everybody's answer. So I like to even create a feedback column. Be like, Alice, you totally need to study. Totally. What is wrong with you? Please go Get see a doctor. Get new pencils. <laughs> Barton, I see you are totally lost, totally. but I know you tried really hard. Watch the video again. Anyway, you know, I can just give students individual feedback, but I have all the answers here. This is a quiz, right, theoretically? So I can actually give them a grade. 20%, whoops, grade, 20%. 50%, I can actually go down and just grade everybody, and I'm just grading them all right on the one spreadsheet instead of going through paper after paper after paper. How are they going to get this feedback? It's going to automatically... Well, you have to insert a script. So here, if I go insert script, there's a bunch of different scripts you could use. Like, you know when I email you every week, I mm -hmm. actually use, I type in mail merge, and I use this one by Sidrahar Prasant. It's another mail merger edited by another mail merger and I click install and so then it does a mail merge but mail merge is back the feedback because you notice I give you feedback every week that's how I do it now if you want to know how to do it go to my blog alicekeeler.com I have directions and then the other merge that we like to use is called Flubaroo Flub a roo so I install that do it Sometimes you have to wait. You got to remember all of these scripts are made by people that are not Google. So mm -hmm. some of them work better than others. All of them are slightly glitchy in different ways. So they don't keep your information though, right? Uh, they could use ones you you trust. Everyone needs. Yeah, Flubrew. I'm totally gonna say it. Flubrew. <laughs> it's the perfect. Yeah, I just script. I just use it. I just use the scripts. All right, okay. come on, install. Do it. Do it. Install. This video is getting really long because we're really waiting. Come on. And like sometimes I like to use the AutoCAD script. And the AutoCAD script is really great because it will merge their answers into a Google Doc, um, which I also have directions on that on alicekeeler.com. But okay, it gives me this error where it says mm -hmm. there was an error, but the flu uh, but the AutoCAD script actually did install. It just pretended that it didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of this. Bakers. If I go back to my Google Drive, I can see here's the responses to my form. Mm -hmm. There's the form and then the responses to the form. So I'm opening back up the spreadsheet. Wait for it. Wait for it. Any scripts that you installed will show up up here next to the help. So here, Mail Merge showed up and Flubrew showed up. So sometimes when I get an error I, or it doesn't seem like it's working, notice it takes a little while to show up. I'll close out, come back in. So if I now do Flubrew, I choose grade the assignment. Mm -hmm. Now the trick is when you do when you're gonna grade with Flubrew, take the quiz first with the right answers. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's gonna ask me which one of these so is the answer show key. Up first, then you yeah, can should just... we should we do this again with doing the answer key? Sure. Okay, so let's go to the live form. What's the right answer here? If you have saggy, baggy eyes. Dark gray. Dark gray, okay, and then I understood this video a ten. How many eyes are on the frontal face? Uh, really? Mm -hmm. What type of pencil do you use to shade? Mm, depends. But it's all right. In this particular yeah, question, one. which one is it? Oh, the right answer. B. See? There was, if there was four more B. than... Oh, 4B. No, yeah. Sorry. If there's more than one right answer, you should do check boxes. Okay. Right? First name, Alice Keeler. You can do it. Not Mrs. What's your last name? Kaur. K-A-U-R. There we go. 
All right, so open it. All right, so I submit that. So we're going to let this one be the answer key, okay? Mm -hmm. So now when I'm over here, I go flu brew, I go grade the assignment. They say, okay. I have to authorize the script. So now, usually when you install a script, you have to do it twice. Once to authorize it, once to actually run it. So I'm going to go back to Flubrew and I'm going to do grade assignment again. Step one. So I can decide if they're worth how many points or if it's just an identifying question. So mm -hmm. these are all worth one point. And these identify the student. This mm -hmm. feedback one is, I'm going to skip grading these. I'm going to skip grading that one too. Because I added those columns in, right? So I click continue. Which one of these is the answer key? This one. Although, that's why you always want the, you do it first so mm -hmm. that the first one's the answer key. Otherwise, you have to scroll. Okay, click continue. Look at that. Do you see it just graded it? View the grades. So it graded every student. If, you, if they failed, they got a, they're in red. And it has this summary that tells me how many points are possible, the average score. Like, If I had 200 students, it would have graded it instantly like that, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can go here to Flubrew, and I can email the grades. You all sucked. <laughs> need to study again. Er, so the downside of this is it, um, it doesn't... Um, let me do individual one-to-one -one feedback. And, and the message I send is to everybody. I'm going to include the answer key. And so now, but but I was able to grade everybody's in a few seconds. But they're, they're not going to see everyone's grade. No, they're not going to see everyone's. It does it one by one. So each person gets their own feedback. So it'll say, oh, Alice, then that doesn't matter. Alice Keeler, you got a 25%. But, you know, the and then I check to say, show them the right answer. So, um... Yeah, so anyway, so that's kind of a nice trick. And then if more people answer it, you can go to regrade the assignment and run it again. So that's a, the Flubrew script lets you give quizzes and grade it. Now if I go here to form, show summary of responses, it gives me little pie charts and graphs of what everybody answered. So if I have the students, they walk in, they do a warm-up. I can then just show the summary of responses, and I can instantly see if the students were comprehending, so I can then adjust my instruction for the day. And I would want this summary, right? These are some nice bar graphs that are really helpful. And then I could actually just take a few seconds. I do flu blue, I grade it, I email them the results. So in the first 10 minutes of class, we've taken a quiz, they've gotten the results back, and then I have a summary so I can adjust my teaching. That's pretty powerful.